Dr. Sadiq, Dr. Sergono, welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for having us. Well, you know, I'm really excited to speak to you today because I feel like Indonesia is kind of a sister country of Malaysia. Uh, there must be some similarities between the two countries, wouldn't you say? I think there is mainly similarity between Malaysia and Indonesia. Yeah. The cultural, the food, and the, the, the language also. I'd, I'd like to know, why was Indonesia selected as home of the APAO 2024? It's been uh, quite a long time since our last time hosting the APAO. Oh, okay. I believe it's time, probably, and there's no better timing. Because um, uh, especially Bali has a lot of um, cultural and food and interesting yeah. things to share to the world. Right. So I think APAO must have looked into that factor as well. About 3,000, 2,500. Uh, ophthalmologists yes, okay. throughout the country. Is that enough to service the population or are no more needed? I think, I don't think so, because uh, our country is uh, consists of around 14,000 islands. So, uh, totally now the spread of the, also the distribution of the ophthalmologists usually uh, or mainly in the big city. Now, as far as your special plans for APAO 2024, could you mention some of them? For next year, we have built a team, I think, thanks to our team. Yeah. Uh, we have worked from maybe last year. As you see, we, we have produced, a, I think, the video promotion for, the, uh, for this APAO meeting. And then uh, we have also make a committee, uh, such that, and we, we have worked from, from last year. Well, you mentioned the, the huge problem of blindness in Indonesia, but it strikes me that perhaps uh, it's also a huge opportunity for the rest of the world to get involved to help solve some of these problems. Uh, and, and I would imagine that at APAO you're helping to lead the way to do just that. APAO could be like a platform for all international yeah. eye specialists to gather and then to create collaboration and networking. It's very important. You know, optometry has become a, a hot topic around Asia Pacific because of the myopia epidemic. So what's the relationship between optometrists and ophthalmologists in Indonesia, or do optometrists even exist there? Nowadays, there is a, a school for optometrists. Yes. Oh, there is. Yes. There now is. Yeah. We have to do, uh, we have to sit together with optometrists, I think with the group of optometrists, to decide our role. Our, I, really do, uh, I really hope that the, in the future, optometrists will play a role in, in our uh, uh, so, Dr. Suryono, can you tell me a little bit about how individuals can impact policy change in ophthalmology on a governmental level? Well, I'd like to think that because we are eye care professionals, we deal with people with eye problems every day. We probably can uh, sense more of the burden of the problem. For instance, if a person got blind, it will affect their quality of life and their families due to give voice to these people or to these problems to get a better attention from say the government or other high stakeholders to take part because this problem might might affect for instance the economy of a, of a country where the, the, the perfect role to help uh, the government and the stakeholders see that this is a big problem. I mean that sounds great but if I'm an individual ophthalmologist um, how can I actually affect change within a government? You know, what can I do? What would you say? It's actually a good question. So I would add to that. Individual has to understand, us as individuals has to uh, realize this problem and work together in, say, like an association, like a yes, society. Perfect. Okay. Like for instance, Perdami, we have a special bureau for uh, prevention of blindness. Yeah. That is uh, helping us to work together so it's a work of us individuals, but in the form, in the platform of a, a, a national uh, ophthalmologist association. Also, in the near future, uh, what can we do to impact the quality of life for sufferers of chronic eye disease in developing countries? Uh, raising awareness and also some uh, developed screening and how to early detect and what they should do if they got, uh, let's say, uh, glaucoma or cataract or uh, things like that. If we uh, 
try to raise awareness. Hopefully, there's an active movement from the people to eye doctors. Yeah. But of course, we also have to have like a national um, coordinate coordinations for screening, especially for more prevalent uh, chronic diseases. That is uh, now the increasing of the myopic children. In the in in the pandemic era, they all learn from home. Yeah. They use gadget, they use laptop, and, and now the number of uh, reflective error, like myopia, is getting increased. It's a problem. So we have to socialize the parents how the way to use laptop, something like that. This is also the, I think, the, the, the new problem, I think. If uh, delegates like Nasi Lamak, is there a, a type of Nasi Lamak you would find in Indonesia at APAO 2024? Definitely, there's a Nasi Uduk. It's, a, it's called nasi yeah. uduk. It's yes, the same, yes. similar. Yes, it's, like I think it's very similar. Sounds delicious. Well, thank you so much for joining us today on Mice TV. We learned a lot about Indonesian ophthalmology, APAO 2024, and some local delicacies to look forward to. So thanks for joining us, and we'll see you there. Thank Hopefully. you very much for Please it. Please come to Bali. I will. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much. So, thank you.